All right, everyone, you are watching Candid Stories of My Soul with myself, Raquel, and our special guest, Ms. Kushbu. And we're going to talk about past life regressions. Um, it's an amazing thing. I've gotten it done before, and it's something that everybody needs to know. So we're going to get into it. Stay with us, and we will be back. Much love and peace to all watching and or listening to Candid Stories of My Soul podcast with myself as the host, Raquel Shelby. From the moment we take our first breath and every experience that follows builds us up and creates the individuals we are today. In life, we will experience both the good and the bad because in order for balance to exist, both must coexist. There cannot be good without bad, nor can there be chaos without peace. We are souls experiencing humanity. The Creator is the author of it all. Rather we believe in a God source or not, He is within us all and is present at all times, embedded in us like our DNA. You will get to audibly witness many journeys of individuals as they are living, breathing, and ever-growing documentaries in the flesh. Many will attest to how the Creator was there, and many of these accounts will be mind-blowing. Please share with your family and friends and enjoy the message we have for you today. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I've, I've been so excited about it. So thank you so much. It's a oh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you for your patience. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we have figured it out. <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> yes, I think I'm going to use this for a while. So, um, you do past life regressions. Can you tell us about that? Get into that. How did you get into it and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So first off, I'm a, I'm a level two quantum healing hypnosis technique practitioner. I know that's a mouthful, but um, it's short. It, you know, we usually like to say QHHT practitioner. And um, just a little bit of background about this, because a lot of people don't know what QHHT is, right? Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about that, but QHHT is this method that was developed by the late Dolores Cannon back in 1968. Um, and over the years, she perfected this method um, over thousands and thousands of sessions with her clients. And she's had wonderful stories and success that she shared um, in the various books that she's published as well. Um, and she's included those case studies. So yeah, I kind of got into it. Um, I kind of got into this a couple years ago and kind of stumbled on one of her books and, and I was just completely sold when I, when I read it and I was like, this is something that is so fascinating and so interesting. Um, but yeah, she's, she's published several books and she's kind of, uh, passed along her teachings to the QHHT Academy. And that's where I got my certifications from. And she's also passed it along to her daughter, Julia Cannon, who is now, yeah, she's spearheading her own course called Soul Speak, which is the language of our bodies. And it, I'm taking it right now. And I got to tell you, it is so cool. It's so fascinating. Um, I'm learning so much about how, um, you know, if we, if we repress our emotions and feelings about certain things or repressed trauma that we haven't kind of dealt with, um, that gets stuck in our body and it manifests itself as disease, illness, discomfort. And I've seen that um, in my clients as well. And through the session, through a session with them one-on-one, -on -one, we're able to uncover the root cause of a lot of these illnesses and diseases. Oh, wow. and yeah. And a lot of it stems from, um, you know, childhood trauma, or even a lot of them have been past life issues that they haven't kind of, you know, come to a solution about. Um, and now they're dealing with that issue again in this life. And so the body is literally this messenger and it's trying to tell us that there's something quite not working in your life right now. Okay. And where the disease is, where the discomfort is in your body is a key indicator as to 
what part of your life is out of balance right now? So oh, wow. that's what I'm kind of learning. And yeah, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, and that kind of goes hand in hand into my sessions, uh, my QHHT sessions. So what I kind of do is I work one-on-one -on -one with my clients for several hours. We, we kind of talk for a bit. I kind of get to know them and their life story. And then I put them under into this really deep, relaxed state of mind, also known as hypnosis. And um, it's a very natural state. I mean, it feels very natural um, and it just, it completely makes you feel relaxed and you, you feel completely centered, calm. And what, what I'm doing is we're basically accessing that your subconscious, your soul, right? Your higher self, universe, whatever you want to call it. And when you're, when you're that relaxed, we're able to remove the fear, the doubt, the anxieties, the what ifs, all those parts of you that is kind of interfering into, in terms of making big life decisions or, you know, kind of figuring out different challenges in your life. So we kind of shut that part out and we come, we kind of highlight or shine light on that all knowing version of you, right? The version of you that knows you um, and all your experiences, not just in this life, but also in your past lives. And through that, we're able to answer any and every question that you have about your life um, in any area of your life. And we're able to find the root cause of those challenges so that we can permanently break that cycle. And so you can live a life that you feel is truest to you and you're living your life to your fullest potential. And so I have seen it in my clients, the success, and it's, I've seen, I've obviously got it done on myself because it's so cool. Um, and it's just, it's a fascinating journey. It's, I love it as you can tell. <laughs> wow. Wow. So how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for about, I want to say two to three years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I know. And when I first started it, I did my level one course um, and I did my exam and everything like that. You have to go through a process past that. Um, and then I went on to pursue my level two and I just finished my level two certification recently. Okay. So this is something that you do full time or do you hold a job as well? Because it seems like that would be kind of difficult to do both. Yeah, right now I am doing this full time. A um, couple of years ago when I did start, it was a part time thing. Um, and I was trying to figuring out, you know, I was in this like PR job. My background is in public relations and communications. Fine too. And so, yeah, and it's, it's a fun, it's a fun industry. And I, and I definitely got to like meet a lot of cool people and worked with amazing people. But I just knew I was like, I don't know, I feel like there's something else I want to do, something one-on-one, -on -one, something more personal and intimate. And um, yeah, and I just was like, okay, you know what? I was, I'm going to find out what it is that I want to do. And I stumbled on um, this practitioner at the time in Iowa. That's where I was living. And um, it was a QHHT practitioner. And I kind of did some research on her and I'm like, wow, like you can find out, like if you're in a rut or if you're in the middle of like, Oh, I don't know what to do with my career. I don't know what, what area to pursue. You can find out answers to that. And I'm like, this sounds really cool. Let's, let's go and see what I'm meant to do. And, um, I went for the session and it was through that QHHT session where I found out I was meant to do this. <laughs> and, and I, I was, yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of took that leap of faith and I was like, Hey, like if, if I want to see this through, it's, it's about trusting myself and I'm just, I'm just going to have to jump right in and, and see how this is going to work out. And so I had to make that really difficult decision of leaving my safe job and pursuing, pursuing this full time. So I, I, yeah, I've been, I've been pursuing it full time for over a year now, I'd say. So that's really amazing, right? Because we all have stuff. Well, some of us, I won't say we all, I, well, I think everybody has something that they want to do, but it's a difference that some people have the courage to actually do it. Then you have the other people that have the courage to do it and really step out on it, like on faith, you know? Yeah. And, um, so that, that's really amazing to, to be able to do that. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, like myself, before I got to doing this, this 
the spiritual side of everything I mm. was doing. I went to school for mass communications, public relations. And before that, I went to uh, Specs Howard. I had got my degree from Rochester College. Mm. And um, I started off just doing news and then got into the entertainment news because that's what everybody wants to talk about. And, and it really wasn't going where it was supposed to go. Uh, yeah. So I don't. It's just funny how life will prompt you and put little things in your path. And then you, well, let me check this out. And like you said, you went to check this practitioner out and only to find out this is what you're supposed to be doing. So it's like, it literally kind of gave you a knock, you know, like, hello. And it's just so, that's so amazing. Um, If you don't mind me asking and not to be, you know, prime, but just to make a point, um, are, so are you single or do you have, well, it looks like you're not single. Yes. I'm married. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Married for five years. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just, I looked at the ring when you said yes. <laughs> I'm asking questions like, here you go. Um, and the reason I asked that because you have someone, a, a, a support system. So you have people that are single and they have nothing to rely on, but just their finances. So it might be a little bit harder for them to do so. Now mm -hmm. I'm married as well, but it's still like, I'm still the type of person that feels like I have to have a cushion, you know? So mm -hmm. I just say all that to, to commend you and your bravery and it's working out because you're able to do it full time. So I try to, I try to, I definitely try to think like that too. I mean, I think you can manifest anything that you, anything that you want really. Yeah. Um, and I think it's all about just the power of your mind and just positive thinking. I mean, you know, it's not easy. It's never easy kind of venturing out on your own and starting a business in, you know, in a space that right now isn't as popular and maybe it is make, making some momentum right now, but um, it's, yeah, it's, I'm, I've, I've fully accepted that it could be a challenge, but um you know, I'm, I'm excited for the adventure. And, and the good thing is that, you know, you're right. Like I do have a support system. I have, you know, my husband, he's, he's, um, he's a working physician. He's a sleep physician actually. So it's kind of funny how like I'm in hypnosis and yeah. he's in <laughs> Isn't that amazing. So <laughs> now you're with somebody you're supposed to be with on top of yeah. that, you have a divine connection. So that's amazing. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. excuse my chair rubbing against the wall, honey. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's been a, it's been so like, I'm so grateful. He's been a huge support and um, yeah, it's, it's, it is about having that support system. So I can feel for people who sometimes feel like, you know, they're on their own and they have this passion, but there isn't as much of a support around them. And, you know, and sometimes it could feel like I don't, you don't have a support system, but I like to remind my clients who feel who feel that loneliness, who do feel that lack of support, that we we do have supporters all around us. And if it's not in the physical realm, it could be in the spiritual realm, as spirit guides, as our loved ones, um, as the universe, really. Um, and it's hard. It's hard when you when you don't have that physical support, right? But um, just kind of knowing that uh, the support is out there. If not here, then it's definitely in the spiritual realm, and we just have to believe in it, really. Yeah, that, that is awesome. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you feel comfortable with talking about your experience, because I definitely want to get into some experiences with yes. this thing so people can know um, how it, what to expect. And you know what, even before I get into that, if you're okay with explaining, can you explain the process? Like when, yes. when the, um, the customer gets there or the patient gets there, how does it go? So they'll know. Absolutely. Yeah. So the process kind of consists of me, my, you know, a practitioner like myself and the client talking one on one for a bit. I like to talk with them for a couple of hours, honestly, kind of getting to know them and building that trust because you're not going to go under hypnosis with someone that you just met if you don't have that trust. And that takes some time. Right. right. So um, I like to talk with them, kind of get to know who they are and what makes them who they are today, really. Um, and after that, we, we kind of shift to, um, you know, I have a cot laid out and kind of, I lay them down, get them really relaxed. I do some visualizations with them to help get them into that right side of their mind and that creative side of their mind. Um, and then I, I, yeah, I, I use my script that I have and I put them under this beautiful, deep, relaxed state of mind, um, hypnosis. And we do the session and the first part of the session um, 
is exploring whatever your subconscious wants you to explore. Most of the times it is past lives because, you know, there are things that our subconscious or the universe wants you to see um, that you, something is affecting you in your life right now that stems from those past lives. And that is why you're seeing them. I've had some sessions, however, where um, not as many, but I've had some sessions where they saw events from their current life, um, mm -hmm. early childhood memories. And, you know, when I asked, um, when we kind of went, you know, when we progressed in the session, I asked their higher self, well, why did we see events from this life and not past lives? And the higher self will say, because these events were you know, most crucial to her life right now. And she needed to unpack that before she can go into the past because there's a lot of trauma in this life alone that stemmed from this life that she needs resolve. She needs to resolve. So um, yeah, that's been a very fascinating thing. And so, yeah, it's really about what your subconscious will give you. Um, and you never get more than what you can handle. And you don't, you get exactly what you need basically during the session. And after the past life portion, we progress on to the higher self portion, which is when I, I ask um, the client for permission to speak to its subconscious. So subconscious, higher self, soul, whatever you want to call it. Right. And they will say yes. And they just kind of continue on answering um, all the questions that I ask on my client's behalf. And they always answer, they always answer the question in third person most of the time. It's very interesting. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that is yeah. a fact. Yeah. And um, yeah, they're, ju they're just, uh, I go ahead and run through the whole list of questions about their life and their higher self will answer all of them. And um, it's so fascinating because you can get like the higher self is a very, um, sometimes it could be like kind of a different personality from the client itself. Sometimes it could be like this hard ass, right? Like, oh, you know, she never listens to me or like, oh, she never meditates. That's her problem. And she knows this and <laughs> just kind of like chuck a little, you know, like, okay, they're really getting onto her. So yeah, it's, it just, it varies on the client um, and it varies on the person. So I've had a huge array of different types of clients with different issues. Um, and honestly, all of them have walked out feeling very like um, with more clarity, I would say definitely more clarity and um, positivity about their life moving forward. I mean, that's the way I felt for sure with the sessions that I've gotten done on myself, um, which I just, I'm so grateful for that. It's helped me tremendously. <laughs> so. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's really good to know. And it's so true. Um, when I got mine done, I was, from what I can recall, as answering in third person. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely something I think I want to do again, because yeah. I'm always feeling like I want to go deeper. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so um, yeah, it's definitely an amazing experience. Um, so when you when you first got yours done, are there some things that you're willing to talk about um, and share that you discovered personally? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I definitely discovered past lives for sure, which I honestly didn't know what to expect. Um, so I got two sessions done on myself. And the first one was the session where I found out that I was meant to do this. And I honestly thought like, maybe because my background is Indian, I thought that I would see a past life for, of me in India. Cause I have like this really strong connection to India and like all this. Right. right. But I didn't <laughs> not, a, I mean, not to say that I didn't have a past life in India, but I didn't see that past life. Okay. Um, I had a past life in Tibet. I've never been there. <laughs> wow. Ireland, never been there either. Um, and then there was this really early childhood memory as well that I saw that like, I saw in full detail, like as a four-year-old little girl, I knew the jacket I was wearing, the shoes that I was wearing, what was going on, like everything. Wow. And I never remembered that up until that point. So it, yeah, I think like more than anything, like I got so much clarity about just uh, my childhood, um, career stuff as well. 
um, in terms of like what I'm meant to do. I mean, I think that was the biggest takeaway from that because after I learned that, I was like, I need to do this <laughs> and figure out, or at least take the course, right? And figure out if it's meant for me. Um, so I think that was that was super cool. And uh, the second session was just um, purely based out of curiosity. And um, I saw some past lives there as well. And this, I would say that the second time I had it done on me, I definitely went more like deeper. Okay. I would say, yeah, like I definitely felt like um, I saw things more clearly okay. and I was like deaf, like deeper than before. And before, like the first one, I thought I was pretty deep, but then <laughs> second time around, I was like, oh, wow, that was like really intense. Oh, so wow. yeah, I think it just depends. And I think maybe because like, my mind knew what to expect, right? Okay. Like I knew what to expect. So like whatever doubt, fear I had or anxiety, like was already kind of out the window. Cause I'm like, I know, I, like, I know the drill, like let's, let's just do the thing and it's going to be fine. And it, and it was, and very natural. And like, when you wake up, you just feel so like refreshed, like, honestly, like you've had this amazing nap and it feels so rejuvenating and it was really great. It's like a, it's like a spa for your mind. So good. <laughs> okay. So I know when I, I did, got it done, I'm actually really cool with, with the lady now. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely feel like I need to get it done again. She did an amazing job. I feel like I needed to get it done again because I feel like I would go deeper. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like I wasn't under enough if that's even a thing. And I was kind of questioning what I was seeing. And I do remember when it came to the point of asking the subconscious, I felt like this internal fight, like, like a literal fight to the point where I, like my breathing changed. I'm like, it was so weird, but I definitely want to do it again. And I've, I've been meditating and stuff like that too. So I feel like I would go in there deeper I would I would get somewhere because I've been you know Absolutely. training and stuff like that so yeah. it is amazing and I encourage everyone um to get it done um what are your what are your beliefs currently yeah currently I mean I'd say you know I'm a very spiritual person um I I grew up with you know Hinduism as my um religion um, and that was part of my whole life. But then, you know, after I was just like, wow, like there's so many interesting things in other religions too, that are so fascinating. And it all kinds of, it all kind of boils down to like one thing. Like if, once you take out all the layers of everything, of all the religions, it all boils down to one thing, love, everything is connected, acceptance, like all those things. And yes. and I think like, I definitely consider myself more of a spiritual person than religious, um, and just kind of, you know, excited about learning of different religions too. Um, but yeah, I think, I think growing up, it was definitely more like Hinduism, going to the temple, you know, all of that stuff. But so did you ever have like an aha moment? Like, okay, Hinduism is great, but was there like an instance that said, um, I, I want to go deeper. I really want to investigate because I, I know you kind of spoke on that, but like, was there a certain situation that you can recall or you just was going with the flow? Honestly, I feel like my whole life, um, I know like I'll have family and friends who will attest to this, but like my whole life, I've just been like so fascinated with like, you know, what could be, um, what we like what we can't physically see. So like the spiritual side, you know, the spirit side, whatever the universe and that my whole life, like that has been something that I was just like always researching on the side, like never as a career, just as a hobby. And I think like the aha moment of like, huh, I think I'm more spiritual than religious kind of came about when I pursued this as a career. And when I was seeing what my clients you know, we're going through in the session. Okay. And I've actually had a really wonderful session where it was my first session ever that I've, I, I did on someone and she was a wonderful, wonderful human. Um, 
and she's never done anything like this. So her session was so powerful. She actually said that she, she when I con- when I contacted her higher self, her higher self said that her higher self was basically experiencing a conversation with the source. So God, whatever you want to call it, right? Mm-hmm. Universe. And I was like a passenger, like in the back seat of that conversation. And it was so beautiful and so enlightening. I mean, she was literally like, I can tell that she was just completely wrapped up in this moment. Um, she was emotional and there was a glow about her. And I just, I just knew she is experiencing something that we don't always experience, you know? And, mm-hmm. um, and, and she had that really beautiful, strong, you know, powerful moment. Um, and I think she went under pretty deep and this has never happened to any of my clients. I mean, they all go in really deep, but after the session, she felt like she had like a hangover and okay. I was like, okay, you really, yeah. So and she went um, in deep. I know exactly oh, what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah. She had a hangover and she's like, is this normal? And I'm like, yes. And I, I contacted some of my other practitioners, um, that I know in the space and, they're like, oh, that's completely normal. She went in real deep. Um, just make sure you tell her to drink lots of water, like however you would treat a hangover, right? Mm-hmm. Um, get some rest, chill, whatever. And so she did. And then, um, you know, in the next day she was fine, but it was, I was like, wow. And then I've had um, another client who kind of to what you're, what you were saying, how you were having this like fight during the higher self portion kind of letting that subconscious come through. Well, she was having so much of that fight, this one client where she had to like, she was feeling nauseous. (laughs) Like her body was literally fighting. And that's how afraid she was for some reason to like let the subconscious come through. Hmm. And she was feeling nauseous. So I kind of, um, I, I stopped the session because I was like nervous. I was like, oh my God, I'm so new. I don't want you to get nervous. You know, I don't want you to like throw up. And then I contacted some of my practitioners and she's like, oh no, like that is completely normal. Call her back for another session and, and see how she does. And so I did. And I reassured her like that the fact that you were feeling nauseous is a key indicator that something powerful was supposed to come out of your session. Oh, wow. And she agreed to do the session again. And she went under deep. I mean, like her subconscious was, um, had a lot to say, had a lot to uncover about her life. And um, I did bring up, I was like, why was she so nauseous during the first time? Like, why was there that block? It's like, oh, she was just so afraid of the truth. She was afraid of what could come out of this. And the body, I, or whatever that wanted to let her know, like, you need to do this. Like this, something has to come out. Like there needs to be a release. Mm. And, um, she sat down for the session again, or she laid down for the session and it was extremely powerful and very eye opening. So, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, a lot of people do have that block, right? It's kind of, I don't know if it's, you know, it's fear, Maybe it's um, expectations too. Like some people think it's supposed to be like this other voice coming out and talking to you, but it's, it's just you, it's you. Um, you're just kind of contacting your subconscious, that all knowing part of you. And so you just kind of let the words flow is what I like to tell my clients, but. Wow. Yeah. Are it's there, just- I'm sorry. Were you, what, am I cutting you off? Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Are there any like takeaways, like major messages that you can recall from the past lives that uh, might clear up some misconceptions or or, um, judgments that you could share? Um, In terms of like misconceptions about like what a session could be like? No, like judgments about, I'm sorry, I wasn't specific. I apologize. Uh, misconceptions about life, people, uh, their ways of life, um, their choices, yeah. religions, beliefs, anything like that, that, that will cause us because, you know, 
we judge one another and have preconceived notions and issues against others because of our lim limited beliefs and understanding. And through mm -hmm. understanding, I mean, one or two things, either you just want to be an asshole or, mm -hmm. you know, you just, it, or you're ignorant. It's, it's not, there is no in between. Either you have lack of understanding or you just want to be an ass. So, right. yeah, I'm really trying to see, is there something that you, any takeaways, you know, just to help that? Totally. Um, yeah. A lot of my sessions, you know, a key takeaway that I would find is like, we're, we're all human at the end of the day. And um, we're all human and we're all connected. And like what you do in this life and how you treat someone is like, it's going to come back to you in some way. So like when my clients say like, why am I constantly having this like horrible interaction with so-and-so in my life? Um, and it's just this reoccurring toxic pattern. Well, sometimes, you know, my, the higher self will say, well, it's because like, this is how you treated this person in a different life. Ooh. And so this is coming back to you. So you better watch yourself. <laughs> okay. So it's, yeah, I mean, I think like, you know, what, what goes around comes around and that's been a key, uh, lesson that I've learned through the sessions with my clients. Also, I've learned, you know, like fear is an illusion. So we use fear as a crutch and it's an illusion. It's not real. And a lot of times like people have worries about like, you know, for example, right. Um, I'm starting a new business. Like when will the money come? Um, I'm nervous, you know, I got bills to pay this. And those are very valid fears. Those are concerns that people face all the time. Right. Um, but I think it's what I've learned through the sessions is like, my clients who've had those issues, those, the, the higher self will say, fear is an illusion. Like money will come this, the moment that you believe that it'll come. So the moment that you put that fear out of your mind and the moment you plant a seed in your mind, that money is coming for me and you start to manifest like what we talked about earlier and you start to visualize your dream life, like that will all play out for you. And that's another key lesson. Like the higher self will always say, for my clients, like they'll always say she needs, or he needs to visualize. He needs to sit down with himself and visualize his key, his dream life. And, um, and often I'll be very specific. So like, I'll ask the questions that my clients have for the higher self, but then I'll ask like follow-up questions, like how many times should she do this? And the higher self will say every day, 15 minutes a day, da, 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 da. and because we need to know, right? Like we can't sit mm -hmm. down and be like, oh, I just need to man manifest my life and I'll just do it like once a month. I mean, the higher self is saying consistency is key yes. and you need to keep practicing it. I mean, that's the only way um, that we'll, we ourselves will believe it. I mean, the more that we visualize our dream life, the more we will believe it and the more kind of the universe will give you what you need. Um, to make it reality. So I think that's been another beautiful lesson that I've learned. Um, other than that, I would say, yeah, I think one of them was um, just what we're consuming on a daily basis in terms of um, food that is like, is just a lot of it is, can be toxic for us. Okay. So to combat that, like the higher self will say, you know, be very picky choosy in terms of what you decide to put into your body, because this is the body you're going to have in this life. So a lot of times, like what we put in our body can affect, you know, we know this, like it can affect our, our mood. It can affect our health, of course. Um, but there's a lot of other things like in our food that we, we don't know of. So the higher self will say, read the labels, do your research and be, be picky, choosy about what you eat mm. um, as well. I get that. I've been getting that a lot recently um, from my clients. And then, um, yeah, and nature is healing. That's, I always have my heart of my clients, higher self say that nature is healing and, and, and just being out with nature grounding, or even if you're not grounding, just being out with nature ha is tremendously healing. Um, and it's, it's something that I think we all need to practice more and I certainly love it, but yeah, I definitely will be practicing that more. <laughs> so I yeah. think. You know, I, what I've noticed is it, you know, when you know, you know, it, it's one of those mm -hmm. things, but um, so many people are 
just indebted in this this life, right? So it, it's so many things going on with our government and uh, around us and things that, like this pandemic, as much as it's opened a lot of positive things, depending on what seat you're in and, you know, what lens you're looking through, there has been some things that have been kind of oppressive and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's like people get so caught up in it. Um, and even myself, I, I question because, you know, it's, it's God made me free and he gave me free will. But yet you have so many things out here trying to take away the free will. Um, is there anything that you can offer towards that, that a person might be battling with that, those type of things? Just yeah. Them, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, at least with the, with the sessions that I've had on my clients, like the key takeaway would probably be that, like what I said, like, we are all, we are all humans. I mean, like that's, at the end of the day and I think a lot of people get wrapped up like what you said in, in this in this life and they kind of put their own prejudices and their own biases on people and like I said I mean what I've been learning is that what goes around comes around people who don't treat people right or whatever or have judgments kind of it'll come back to them in some way shape or form and um, what we can do is just like be our best. And that's what, you know, I had a client come in who was like just battling with like, you know, a lot of stuff in, in her family and prejudices and everything. And the higher self would just said, you know, you, you, all you can do is your best. That is all that we can do. Mm -hmm. And finding your peace, the rest of the world and how they treat you like is a reflection of how they feel about themselves. and whatever is coming for them will come for them. Mm -hmm. That is all like, that is all that we can do, unfortunately. And it's disheartening sometimes because you feel like, oh, I wish I could do more. And all that we could really do is just be us and live our life um, and kind of just keep our inner peace during that time, you know? You know, um, I had stumbled across Dolores Cannon as well. Actually, I don't even know if I stumbled across her or my sister-in-law had sent me a video but it was something to that effect and she speaks on how we've been everything literally everything and mm -hmm. it makes so much sense because you would have to sit in different seats to have a, a broad understanding and get the experience and um and it's and it's amazing to me you know how people don't respect certain things like animals and you know, like, how do you, how do you not respect that? You know, um, I hate that. I, it just breaks my heart. It does. It, it breaks, it drives me crazy. Um, even to the fact that people really feel like that animals don't have feelings or like, I'm a huge dog lover. And one of the things that drives me up a wall is when people say, oh, that's just a dog. Like you're treating it like a human. It's a dog. But I do believe that we give dogs consciousness right mm -hmm. um and Dolores Cannon speaks on how they come here in a group soul and it's the um owner that gives the the dog that that um that consciousness that I, I don't want to say a soul but yeah we 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 kind of upgrade them in a way you know um yeah and I don't know I just animals are so beautiful and they're just so intuitive and they, they know when to show up and, and they're wonderful because they're not always yapping and being annoying and obnoxious. They're just present, you know? Yes. And I, and I think that's what we need to learn from animals too. They're present and they move on a code. They move on instinct, mm -hmm. you know, and it's so much to be, it's so much to learn studying nature. It really is. And I think we have to respect that, you yeah. know, and, um, it's funny how we call, we, we talk about animals, but yet we act like animals, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, <laughs> I and, I hate, and I know someone watching this is going to be like, oh, why would she say that? And I really don't care. Like you, you act like a barbarian, but you, but animals in a lot of cases are more humane than we are. And, um, when they're, when they're killing or when they're violent is generally for protection or for survival. I mean, it, you know, they have to, they have prey. It's a, it's a, it's a system. It's a cycle. Um, it's a food chain cycle, whatever, what have you, but 
-hmm. just stuff like that. Um, and, and the prejudices, it's like, when you really think about it, why do you have an issue with someone based on color or uh, yeah. sexual preference and stuff like that? Be I mean, at, at the very minimal, without even understanding it, like, that's their business. Yeah. Why do you care? You know? Is, is there and it's like, have you ever, have you ever, like, had a thought about someone? Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so like me, I'll, I'll take myself for example. I've never felt, I've never had a strong feeling about gays, never. I've never had like, oh, I hate them or anything like that. But I've always, I will say that I'm more knowledgeable now than I was previous, right? So it was never any ill feelings, but I had a friend come along and he taught me so much just being a friend. Mm -hmm. and, and you realize when you begin to uh, form a bond with people, who they are and all the other stuff doesn't matter. You, you begin to love their spirit, their character, you know what I'm saying? How they treat you. That, that's what it is. The, the outer shell is irrelevant, you know? Mm -hmm. And if we would just take some time just to reflect and mm -hmm. really think about things, man, we will be so better off. And I, just being angry and evil to me is, is such a task. Yeah, it's, I agree. Why? It, it's it's such a task. I, I don't get it. Energy draining, honestly. <laughs> it's it draining is. For the person who's, you know, actually basing someone's, you know, basing your likely, basing if you like that person on or not based on whatever, race, gender. I mean, it's, it's draining. Like, why put yourself through that even? Um, and it's like what you said, you know, once you start to form this bond with someone and you get to know who they truly are at the core, like all that stuff doesn't even matter because you're getting to know them, them as a soul, as a person on this planet walking, you know, you know, living at the same time as you. I mean, yeah. And I think like, you know, my hope is like people are, are understanding that I think, but people need to understand more of that, honestly. Um, and I think with time hopefully that'll be even better than it is now because if not now when <laughs> I mean, right yeah so what are you, what are your thoughts what are your projections um about in the direction we are going do you think we're going in a more positive uh direction of course I always think there will be um because of balance I always think and this is an earth plane this is this is a school uh -huh. so it's gonna have its challenges but do you see a certain um, utopia in a way coming towards us? I certainly think so. I mean, I think the way we're headed, you know, I feel like after every, like, you know, it's so cliche, but like after every storm, after every turbulent situation, there's so much realization that people have, you know, they get that time to reflect. And especially during the pandemic, that has, you know, been such a trying time for a lot of people. And it, it's been very obviously tragic too, but it's given people that time to reflect on, on their behaviors, on society, on family, whatever it is. And people have grown from that. So I think like, you know, despite whatever the political situation, pandemic, whatever's been going on, like, I do feel like after that, there's going to be this, and there is already this realization happening amongst people. Um, and they're reflecting more and people are becoming more I guess, spiritual, right? People are reflecting on their own actions a bit more and things are coming to light. You know, your actions are coming to light. I mean, people are not going to sit down and, and shut up anymore. They're just not. <laughs> they're and not I think people know that. <laughs> so they're very like, you know, very um, mindful about their actions and, and as they should be. So I think, I think the projection is, from my point of view, at least, that we are headed towards um, something better. And I think like, it's about time. <laughs> and so I think if we keep going like this, if we, if we keep, you know, as a collective, if we keep pushing ourselves, if we keep encouraging one another and being positive, really, I, I think that the, it, the sky is the limit. I mean, we, we could do so much. I mean, humans are just so powerful we are so powerful um and I think we're realizing that slowly like we have the power to not just heal ourselves 
we have the power to heal each other and mm -hmm. society. I think, I think good things are coming. That's the way I like to look at it. So I do too. I, I really do too. Um, how often would you recommend doing QHHT? Yeah. I mean, the idea is like, you know, one set, one and done type of thing, because I meet with my client, like five to six hours. So for five to six hours, we're doing like an intense, intimate, you know, QHHT session. So the idea is that, you know, in one session, you'll have all your questions answered. And then you walk away with a recording of the session, audio recording that you can have for life. And, um, yeah, you can listen to it as many times as you want. And, and the healing happens the more times you listen to that. So I think one and done um, for people, you know, who are more curious about it, who do feel like they wanted, um, they wanted to go deeper, you know, maybe a se second session would be, would, would be recommended. But yeah, I've only had that one client come in for a second session, but everyone else kind of felt like, okay, you know, cause it's an intense process, intense, meaning like it's, it's very like, wow, I'm accessing some, a part of myself that I don't always access for this, for this, for this long, you know? Um, and so one and done is, is what I would say is the goal. Yeah. Okay. So this next question might be sound crazy. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear it. But it is, it's a question nonetheless. Um, so I've never tried mushrooms. Mm. Um, it's, it's something that I am interested in, but is that a component? Because I know someone who does Reiki or Reiki, however you pronounce Reiki. it, yep. Reiki, mm -hmm. and they have implemented the mushrooms with the Reiki. Oh. So would you think that that's something that would be um, cool to do with QHHT? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't think it has been done yet. I might be wrong, but um, it, I don't think it has been done yet. Um, I, we do like to kind of say that, um, kind of remove any substances, even mushrooms or whatever it is, um, out of your system. So you're kind of just pure and you're okay. just, the visuals come as they should instead of more heightened or less heightened. Um, but I've, yeah, it's an interesting topic. It's definitely something that I am curious about. I mean, I would assume that it would be very. Yeah, I'm sure you would come, you would, you would see some intense things is what I'm thinking. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a cool thing. I'm definitely going to look into it. I mean, I mean, you could probably real. be the first, who knows? Ah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> who knows why I brought it up, right? You never know. Right. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things. Oh, wow. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add before we get out of here? Yeah, no, I mean, I just think, um, I think that we have this powerful tool, you know, our subconscious and we can access it with, you know, whatever your meditations, or if you want to go deeper with a QHHT session. Um, and I think that there's just so much that we can learn about ourselves. And I mean, I've, I've learned, I learned through my clients as I, as you probably noticed, and it's beautiful. I mean, I love it. And, um, I'm, I'm hoping that more people will kind of get into this and see what they can uncover about themselves. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> Well, I will, I, I definitely want to do this again. My battery on this, uh, <laughs> on this <laughs> camera has, is, is going out. So I don't want oh, it to okay. go out on you, but no, I definitely want to do this again. And I really appreciate you so much for coming on the show. Um, this was an amazing interview. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for being patient. And I would love to have you back. Yes, but, um, Thank you. You guys make sure that you like, comment, and share this video. Leave some questions that you might have. Maybe we can come back and address those when we have her back. So please leave some questions. Um, and tell, uh, give your information so they can schedule some sessions with you if they're interested. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can book a session with me or just look up some information on my website. That's spiritualhealinghypnosis.com. And just reach out if you have any questions.
Thank you so much, Kushbu. This was amazing. And I will be speaking with you soon. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.